Hello dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to the Blessed Messages for You channel. Before we dive into today's message, I'd like to ask a special favor from you, our viewers. If this content touches your heart, please help us spread God's word by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and leaving a comment about how this message has impacted your life. Your participation is crucial in helping us reach more people with the good news of the gospel. Today we're addressing a crucial topic for all of us Christians, the Great Commission. This commandment, given by Jesus Christ himself, is at the heart of our mission as followers of Christ. Let's explore together what it means to fulfill the Great Commission in our days and how we can live out this calling in our daily lives. Our journey begins with the powerful words of Jesus, recorded in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. These words, spoken by our risen Savior, carry immense weight. They're not a mere suggestion, but a direct command from the King of Kings. It's a call that echoes through the centuries, reaching us today with the same urgency and importance as when it was first uttered. Let's unpack this commandment and understand its depth and implications for our lives. First, let's look at the verb, go. Jesus didn't say, if you go, but go. It's an imperative, an order. This means that as followers of Christ, we don't have the option to stay put. We're called to step out of our comfort zone, to move towards the world around us. This going can mean different things for each of us. For some, it might literally mean traveling to distant lands as missionaries. For others, it might mean crossing the street to talk to a neighbor about Jesus. The important thing is to understand that we're all called to act, to move towards those who don't yet know Christ's love. The next crucial aspect of the Great Commission is make disciples. Note that Jesus doesn't just command us to make converts, but disciples. There's a significant difference here. A convert is someone who has accepted Christ, but a disciple is someone who actively follows Jesus' teachings and seeks to imitate him in all aspects of life. Making disciples is an ongoing process that involves teaching, guiding, encouraging, and challenging others to grow in their faith. It's a long-term commitment that requires patience, love, and dedication. As Paul wrote in Colossians chapter 1 verses 28 to 29, He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. Jesus' command also emphasizes the universality of our mission, all nations. This reminds us that the gospel is not limited by geographic, cultural, or ethnic boundaries. The message of salvation in Christ is for everyone, without exception. This might challenge us to step out of our comfort zone and reach people different from us. It might mean learning new languages, understanding different cultures, or simply being willing to relate to people who think and live differently than we do. Let's remember Paul's words in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. This truth should shape our approach to fulfilling the Great Commission. Baptism, mentioned by Jesus, is an important aspect of discipleship. It's a symbolic act representing death to the old self and rebirth in Christ. It's a public declaration of faith and commitment to Jesus. As Peter taught in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Teaching to obey everything Jesus commanded is another crucial element of the Great Commission. This implies not just imparting knowledge, but helping new disciples apply Jesus' teachings in their daily lives. This aspect of discipleship is an ongoing process of transformation. As Paul wrote in Romans 12 verse 2, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Teaching to obey involves more than just words. It requires us to be living examples of Christ's teachings. As Jesus said in John 13 verse 35, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. A fundamental aspect of the Great Commission that we often neglect is Jesus' final promise. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This isn't a task we're meant to fulfill on our own. Jesus promises his constant presence and power to enable us. This promise should fill us with courage and confidence. No matter how challenging the task may seem, we have the assurance of Christ's presence with us. As Paul declared in Philippians 4 verse 13, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Now let's consider some practical ways to live out the Great Commission in our daily lives. 1. Pray daily for opportunities to share your faith. Ask God to open doors and prepare hearts. 2. Study God's Word regularly. The more we know the Scriptures, the better equipped we'll be to share them with others. 3. Cultivate genuine relationships. People are more likely to listen about Jesus from someone who truly cares about them. 4. Practice hospitality. Open your home to people. Often the deepest conversations happen around a dinner table. 5. Use your skills and talents to serve others. This can open doors for conversations about your faith. 6. Support ministries and missionaries. If you can't personally go to other nations, you can help send others through your prayers and resources. 7. Be a mentor. Invest time in discipling new believers, helping them grow in their faith. 8. Actively participate in your local church. The Great Commission isn't an individual task, but something we do in community. 9. Be prepared to give an answer. As Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 15, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Sometimes we might feel inadequate for this task. We might think we don't have enough knowledge or that our faith isn't strong enough. But remember, God doesn't call the equipped, He equips the called. Moses felt inadequate when God called him to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. He said to God in Exodus chapter 4 verse 10, Pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. But God answered, Who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go. I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. Similarly, when we feel inadequate to fulfill the Great Commission, we can trust that God will equip us with everything we need. As Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5, Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. As we conclude our reflection on the Great Commission, I'd like to challenge you to seriously consider how you can live out this calling in your daily life. May we all one day hear the Master's words, well done, good and faithful servant. Matthew chapter 25 verse 21. Remember, each small act of obedience to the Great Commission can have an eternal impact, as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10 verse 42. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. Dear brothers and sisters, May we be faithful in fulfilling this great calling, trusting in the presence and power of Christ who is with us always. Before we close, I'd like to thank you for dedicating your time to watch this video. If this message touched your heart or brought a new perspective on the Great Commission, please don't hesitate to share it with others. You can do this simply by liking this video, subscribing to our Blessed Messages for You channel, and leaving a comment about how this message has impacted your life. Your actions not only help us reach more people with God's Word, but also encourage others to reflect on their role in fulfilling the Great Commission. Remember, each like, 
Each subscription and each comment can be the means by which someone finds hope and purpose in Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.